Creating opportunities for Bermudians was one of the key motivations for bringing the America's Cup to Bermuda. Over the course of almost three years, a wide variety of individuals and organizations grasped those opportunities. They grew the businesses, expanded the careers, and developed new skills to meet the unique demands of the America's Cup. It's a great source of pride to, to Russell, to, to me, and to the rest of our management team that we hired Bermudians for those early jobs. Uh, whether it was, you know, the, the graphic design that was a Bermudian team, uh, the branding that was a Bermudian team, and I could go on, of course. There are so many Bermudians that really um, were, became the culture and the DNA of, of our America's Cup here in Bermuda. I had to push myself to communicate and sort of compromise, which I've never really had to do as an only child. So, yeah, I think I grew a lot in that aspect. Um, it takes me a little while to warm up to people, but I think I worked on that, and I can say I'm better at it now. Myself and the other silver commander, which was um, Chief Inspector Jerry Laws, we actually had to um, fly away to England, um, where we done a course um, in January and into February, just to get some experience and skill set that would have been needed for the America's Cup. We should never shy away from the opportunity of collaborating with, with guests, guest workers to this island, because you start to realize that these, these individuals, this is their expertise, this is their life. And um, I just feel so very fortunate to be around some of these people to take those, take that knowledge. The new skills acquired will have a lasting impact for all of Bermuda and are already being applied to everyday operations, as well as new projects like the ITU World Triathlon Series being held here in 2018 through 2020. Next time we have an event, be able to say, hold on a second, there are people. There are now people that can do that. Um, and utilizing the, I don't know, hundreds of Bermudians that were very close to this event and have learned so much from it. And we always reference it, to be quite honest. You know, since then we've been referencing and saying, well, you know, for the America's Cup, this is how we plan to run it. And, it. and it did really well. So it's definitely some legacy with the police. Um, and it's actually altered how we actually plan and look at events now. So we, we, we do look at it as a, a more of a collective eye. Working at the America's Cup has opened up my eyes into the world of sports marketing and branding. I'd love to be able to work on another sporting event again. Um, really lucky to have that experience here in Bermuda. Another Bermudian who had to up his game for the America's Cup was videographer Lamon Woods who was involved with the cup from the day it arrived here. Lamone worked directly for the ACEA, the ACBDA, and produced an international television series about the cup. But ironically, he wasn't a supporter at the start. When they first announced the America's Cup, I would have to say, honestly, that I was a naysayer, and partly due to listening to people, other people, um, partly due to my own feelings about it. At first I was like, it's a waste of time. And then I realized that, you know what, if I don't, if I don't go for it, then I will never be able to complain later. But it didn't work out that way for me. You know, and I think it didn't work out that way for a lot of people who actually went through the process of trying to become involved. There were spaces for you. And I think me along with a lot of others, maybe learn that, hey, if you do go for it, you know, it is, there are possibilities of you getting what you want. I did some projects with golf.com, golf um, did some projects when NBC came down, and more importantly, it was a project that I did with Rachel Sorden with an overseas uh, network. When you ever get on a, on a major network, there are certain things in terms of audio, in terms of video, that have to be adhered to. I mean, there's a laundry list of things. The first episode we did, I never forget because I sent it in. They said, oh, it was, it was fine or whatever, but these are all the errors we need corrected. So, you know, just in my normal thing, you figure, okay, just need to fix this. So just change this cut. It was like three pages. It was three pages of errors. And I'm like, hmm, I looked at this thing three times. What errors are they talking about? 
it was a work in progress, but I'm happy to note that by the time we got to the third, fourth episode, you know, the hours were very low. It was just we had, I didn't know. So once I knew, we corrected for it. And it just set us up for really, it gave me a lot of confidence and let me know that, hey, if I ever have to do anything at a higher, at, at you know, international level, I kind of understand what's involved. I'm too old now to say I'm gonna go away and run with the circus, you know? I'm gonna go to Hollywood and just be a grip for three years and you don't have to pay me. I knew that those options were not mine. I knew I couldn't go back to school for four years and do a film degree, you know, because I have obligations and responsibilities here. So this sort of brought the university to me in a sense. So. In the finals, uh, we were once again uh, called upon to, to be involved with the event TV. Um, which was all the all the big screens, the jumbotrons around the event village, and also all the televisions in the mega yachts. They were picking up a signal that we were sending out. I was working with a guy, they call him DT, and um, he's basically a uh, producer of the year in New Zealand this year. He just came from the, the Brazil Olympics. He was there producing for that as well. He was really helpful, and there's no way I would have met this guy. There's no way I would have met him. So sitting next to him all day for a whole month, you learn a lot, you know? And just by, even if you didn't talk, just watching him operate and how he lined up his, his stuff and how he stayed organized, how he stayed on top of things, just watching that was like, wow, you know, I couldn't pay for this. Just watching a guy who did it at these levels, because I may never, or knowing him now, I may, because I don't know, because we still keep in contact now. He e emails me every time he's on a new job. Hey, I'm doing this job here now. Da -da -da. He'll give me a, you know, send me a screenshot of, of the board that he's working on. So the America's Cup taught me, if you see, if you see an opportunity, put yourself out there, because at least you could learn from the experience of, even if you don't get what you're looking for, at least you can learn from the experience of putting yourself out there, you know, preparing a document getting all your docs in a row. Because this is what it forces you to do. So me putting myself out there allowed me to, these younger guys that, some of them don't even have jobs. They just they freelance, they freelance video for me, but it's very hard for them to get jobs now. So these opportunities that I put myself out there to get, it actually filtered down to them as well. Because if I would not have got these jobs, they probably would not have been involved at all. So they got to be involved at a higher level, use the big cameras, $400,000 cameras, things that they would have never even got to experience before.